result that I'm looking for. <coughs> if it's about having a great marriage, I've got a way that comes naturally, right? I learned it from my parents. Guess how well that worked? You know, it didn't work out well for them. So, uh, but that's what comes naturally for me. So inside of that is you have drive, enthusiasm, intuition, natural behavior, spontaneity. And what happens is that worked for a little while, right? It worked for a little while. And then you hit a ceiling. We, this is the ceiling, fundamental ceiling of achievement. Like at some point, you will hit a ceiling where that doesn't work to the level. If your goals are big enough, you'll hit a ceiling that your natural ways are good enough. If my goals have such a good golf game that suddenly my swing doesn't get me there anymore, right? What do I have to do? Adjust. Yeah, adjust, get more better equipment. What else? Change your swing. Change my swing. How would I do that? If it's, well, I'm doing what it feels right. Yeah, get a coach, get some training, right? And look at this. How do you break through the selling achievement? Training, coaching, consulting. Somebody's got to teach me a better swing, right? So now if my goal in business is I need to generate enough leads to get a certain amount of listings, right? I have my plan. This year I need to take, give me a number. How many listings do we need to take this year? 232. All right, 232 or 12, right? Either way, it's fine. It's your goal. So my goal is 50. I'll go in the middle between the two. Uh, my goal is 50 listings. Based on what feels right for me, I'm probably only going to be able to take 20. So I need training, coaching, consulting. Otherwise, I'll keep bouncing off of 20. I'll keep hitting 20. I'll be disappointed. And finally, I might give up and resign and go, you know, greener pastures. It's not working out for me. I'm going to get something else. And what? Because if I, and as long as I keep that pattern of life where I would do what comes natural to me, it's going to be another job, another job, another wife, another wife, another sport, another sport, right? Um, until I move on and say, okay, my goals are bigger than my natural ability, so I need to get some training, coaching, consulting. Um, and when I do that, then it's, you're actually doing what comes totally unnatural, right? Has anybody ever done golf? Like, you know, I, I never done it, but I was with somebody once at a driving range, and they're like, oh, no, hold it this way. And that is like the most unnatural feeling in the world. Has anybody ever done that? Yeah. It makes no sense, right? It feels totally counterintuitive. Same thing. You might come to one of these classes on how to generate your leads for listing, you're like, oh, wow, that is way outside my comfort zone. That does not feel right at all. There's no way I'm calling all those people. There's no way I'm knocking all those doors. Like, what if somebody yells at me? They're going to think I'm there to rob them. You know, like this. Right? It's the same thing as the golf swing. But if my goals are that big, I've got to hold the club that way because it works. How do I know that it works? How do I know it works when this... this Professional is teaching it. Oh, free it. Oh, it's free, it's free, free, right? They're already, they've it's already been done. Like everybody knows it that way. So, is it proven that if you knock on a bunch of doors, then you'll end up taking listings? Yes. Yeah, it's proven. Is it proven that if you call enough people and you even stink at scripts, like somebody's gonna tell you to come over and list their house? Yes. Yeah, that's a hundred percent proven. One hundred percent, like gravity. So then it's it purposeful style, which is usually I even like to say it's somebody else's plan. It's something proven out there. Now. Now I've got a strategic option. Now I'm following a model. Now I'm following a system. And then finally, I've got to have accountability. Like none of this works without accountability. Because if somebody's not there, like correcting that swing all the time, over and over and over again, like what am I going to go back to? My natural style. So if somebody's not in my head, a coach saying like, no, 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 door knock this way. No, 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 get back out there. No, 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 no. And you're like, all right, when they say this, try this this time. Then I'll go back to my natural style which might be sitting behind a computer, not being out there knocking on doors, right? See where I'm going? And then, I won't, then I'll be fighting over that 5% of the cash, not the 95%. So this is one of the foundational things to understand, is like for you to hit your goals and be that purposeful with your minutes in the morning and during your prime time, you're going to be following somebody else's plan. You're going to be following somebody else's model. It's going to be somebody that's already walked that path, or a, a thousand people that have already walked that path in this industry. There's thousands of teens and agents that have already succeeded where you want to go. So you don't have to follow their model and then infuse it with accountability. You with me? Are you doing all right? All right, so now, now that you agree that that's how you'll do it, it's time to put it into a plan. So the 401 is a tool uh, for doing that. And I actually um, had Liz print out a blank one, so I don't know if you this, but I have that. Maybe you can, do you all take one? Oh, good. Yeah. Anybody miss one? No, that's one. Yeah, thank you. All right, so a couple back there. Mm -hmm. I hear you can the back there. Two over here. Okay. <coughs> there you go. My pleasure. Anybody else miss one? Do you have extras? 
these are the eight goal categories for a mega agent. These are the eight most critical categories to set goals inside of. The eight most critical categories to set goals inside of. Where do these eight goals categories come from? Yeah, Millionaire Real Estate Agent, the Red Book, our fundamental book. So is this what Gary Keller woke up one day and said, all right, I figured out what's most important for mega agents? No. How did they write that book? Does anybody know? Just to the top agents. That's it. They interviewed the top agents and they found the patterns. They're writing Millionaire Real Estate Agent 2 right now. And they've got a research department that is interviewing top agents. You're interviewing top agents. I had one call already uh, with them about our ISA division, and they've got, got to do, I'm having another call with Jeff on in a week or so. And it's just breaking them, and that's all they do is just interview hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of successful agents and like, let's break down your business, what do you track, what do you do, what do you stop tracking, right? And then they find these patterns like, hey, it's not a coincidence that the top 100 agents in the, in the country all say, like, these are the eight things that they really track the most and pay attention to. We might be onto something here. Let's, let's focus on that, right? So this is just based on success strategies. Now, let's play a little game. This isn't normally part of the course, but I want to train your brain. Um, when you see a list of things, I want you to automatically train your brain to look for an 80-20 principle. So you, uh, when you see a list like that, anytime you see a list, I want you to train your brain to say not all those things are equally matter. Not all those things will give me the same output, right? You've got 12 different options here. One of them matters the most, right? They're not all the same. That, I mean, it's just how, it, it's how life is in everything. I can do these five things with my wife. One of them is going to make her happier than the other four. One of them is going to be a little bit better. One's going to look, right? That's how life works. So um, how many items do we have on here? Eight. What's 20% of that? Let's just stick with 80-20. What's 20% of that? 1.6. Yeah, so, so two. Um, which two matter the most on there? Well, how do you know? Because leads give you listings. And listings give you everything else. Yeah, so if our goal is dollars, right? That's how the 80-20 principle works, right? When you hit the 20%, does everything else get a little easier? No. Right? You, and, and that's how you know it's most important. Well, if I took them out, how well could I achieve anything else on the list, right? That's how you know. Now, Gary Keller in the one thing says like, hey, even take the 20%. We're looking at a, a, you know, a list of 50 things, it would be 10 makes up the 20%, right? So even out of that, like narrow it down to the one inside the 20% that really matters the most. Because even inside the 20%, not all things are equal. So even out of leads and listings, which one actually makes the other one easier or unnecessary? Leads, right? And it's funny, like, those are actually, you know, prioritized that way. So now the whole thing is, life doesn't give us everything in a list of priorities. Like, all right, here's one, this is most important. You've got to figure some of this stuff out on your own, or talk to people who are doing it at your level, or the level you want to do it at, and like, how do you choose what matters most? Yesterday when I was in Austin, I got home at 2 a.m. this morning from, from Texas, I was in class, uh, yesterday afternoon, and our president and CEO, John Davis and Chris Eller, came in and just kind of like asked, you know, answered questions to everybody in the crowd. It was pretty cool. And somebody asked a great question. Like, John Davis, like, you're a real busy guy. Like, how do you choose on a daily basis what matters most? How do you prioritize? And he had an answer like that. And I sat there and said, like, I wonder how many of us have an answer like that. He said the very first thing, because the guy, he's like, I'm sure things come into your calendar. I mean, things come into my calendar. You're the president of this, the largest real estate company in the world, I suspect things come into your calendar a lot. You know, how do you keep on track? I, he's like, I automatically get a priority. He's like, they're pre predefined. So yeah, in the in I have my list of activities. There's already six, seven, eight appointments made for that day. Now as stuff comes at me, I I rank them. Is this a growth item? If it's a growth item, it's about growing Kelly Williams Realty, I will go I will go there first and push the other things up. <clears throat> Second biggest priority is legal issue. If there's anything legal issue, I'll stop other things and then fix that. Third thing is the people that uh, matter the most, like my 20% people. If it's one of them that texts me, one of them that calls me, um, then I'm going there third. Everybody else is like either later at the end of the day if there's time or we book something later. See how it works? He even prioritized the things that come at him by surprise. And it's a great way to live. And he already has the structure of his 20% built into that. Suppose that's 
a coincidence why he's as successful as he is? Do you think he got that way after getting becoming president, or do you think that's why he's the president? That's why he's the president. You're right. That's why he's the president. He wouldn't be the president if he didn't even think that way and structure his day that way. Who do you think he learned that from? Coaching. Yeah, coaching and counseling. Gary Keller was his coach. Helped him along the way, right? So that's it. So now your one thing inside of that is lead. So anything that comes, that's, if a lead comes at you, that would be a yes, I'll stop everything and do it. Now, if uh, something a little down the line, what about, what about a contract close? What about a contract that's on fire that comes at me? And it's lead generation time. If you're disciplined and living by this lifestyle, then you actually push the contract on fire off. You don't deal with it now so that you do number one and do number two and do number three. And, and as counterintuitive as that may feel, right, with the word we already hit us, as counterintuitive as that may feel, you'll hit your goals. It's when you allow one of the things, even in the top eight, to trump something that's above it, you don't hit your goals. So if you haven't done lead generation and you've chosen education today when you're here, not good choice, bad choice, is that a choice that's going to lead to your goals? Probably not. So for you, it may not be the best choice, right? So if you've done, if you're doing education today before you've done the seven things above it, you may reconsider, right? There's a reason why we put this class in the afternoon. We didn't have time to do all that stuff. Right? Are you with me? So leads always trumps everything. Good. So now accountability. Accountability. This is the critical piece to your achievement. This is it. This is the critical piece to your achievement. It's almost like if I said, like, all right, let's bake a cake, and there's these six ingredients, which one, like, would be the critical ingredient? I mean, okay. they all matter. Yeah, the mix, right? Probably it's critical. I mean, I don't know. They're all pretty critical. Um, but there's one that, like, you you got nothing. You don't have anything to eat. Yeah. Maybe the flour, right? So, like, um, accountability is the critical ingredient to your success. Uh, I once, in another class I teach, there's a study in there. I might misquote it, but the general thing is um, when they, they, they studied achievement, it became about 10% about the person's goal, 10% um, about their, um, I don't remember, 10% about their goal, 10% something else, and 80% accountability. <coughs> like whether or not they achieve their goal. That, that achieving a goal, 80% of achieving a goal was back to accountability. So how do you, what are some ways that folks have accountability in their life? What are some ways you have accountability in your life? You know, like in leads and listings and relationship, all, I mean, all these different things. We've talked about health today. Yeah. Accountability is um, both my husband and a friend of mine actually set out a goal sheet and said, okay, this is what I want to achieve. This is how I want to hold me accountable. This is, you know, I come home every night and my husband's like, okay. Well, I mean, he calls me very shortly. Did you do this today? Did you do this today? Have you set this night of appointments today? All right, don't come home until you do. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he's calling you and you're not allowed to come home until you do. Yeah, that's great. What are some other ways people get held accountable? <coughs> um, I mean, for me, I have a coach, um, and my coach, uh, for me, I've become more self-accountable because I'm focusing on building the habit. So it's not necessarily about like how many appointments set a day, it's how many conversations that I have. So he's helping me figure out how to drive the activity, so I'm driving myself to the activity, and then also driving everybody around me to the activity, rather than like pushing them towards the result. That's awesome. And that's Matt's coach? Yeah. Yeah. I have a I have two maps coaching calls a week, um, a week. So I have two contracts personally, and every person around me has a contract. Every person around me has a contract, and um, and and that's not for training, for wisdom. It's for accountability, and we get the other stuff as a bonus, right? A lot of times people think that you hire a coach so that you learn how to do better in real estate. That's not what coaching is. It's not what coaching is. That's training, like, and you're doing that here, right? You come to a classroom for training, and you go hang out with somebody else for training, and then your coach says, okay, now that it helps you put together the plan, if you don't have it put together already, now here's your plan, like, did you do what you're supposed to do? What'd you, what did you run into? 
they, they show you the blind spots in your thinking. When you start to say victim, or you start to say, well, the reason why I didn't do it was da 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 they help you with that. Coaching is for accountability, not for, and I just say it because a lot of times people think that coaching is for training. Or I heard people say like, well, I can't get a coach because they haven't done that. I, that person can't be my coach because they haven't done that before. Like, do you think that I can find a coach in Keller Williams Realty that has opened more than 12 teams across the country and that can teach me how to do that? No, nobody's done it yet. Like, we're the first ones to do it. But my coach, but I wouldn't be able to have even gotten this part if it weren't for my coach. My coach knows the plan and helps me, holds me accountable to doing what I'm supposed to do. Did you make that call? Did you go meet that person? Did you do that interview? Did you get your three leads on, on talent? You know, what about this? What about this? Hey, there's a blind spot in the way you're looking at this. You know, your, your language is off from where you want to go. Right? That's what, that's what accountability does. So if you don't have a coach, and believe me, I got my MAPS coach before I could afford it. Absolutely. I didn't, I didn't have enough money to get it, and I just did it. And I had to hide it from my wife to make me sleep outside or something. And, and it worked out. I mean, it's worked out pretty well for me. I, I've had a coach since my first year in real estate. I haven't stopped. Always MAPS. Because, and, I, and always MAPS because they speak our language. You know, they know MREA. They know leads, listings, leverage. They know recruit select. They know all of that. They know ABA. They know behavior profile. They, same language, same model. So why would I even get a different company? A lot of the other companies I've noticed actually are trainers, not coaches. And so I have a coaching company, I'm going to teach you how to market, I'm going to teach you this listing consultation. That's training, you get that in the classroom. You get a coach for accountability. So this becomes um, a key part of your journey. This is the key. This is 80% of your success is going to come from that. Uh, it always does it. So let's kind of look at 411, like the worksheet you have in front of you now that you have these concepts in mind. Um, the 411, um, useful categories. So you have one in front of you that doesn't have like separate categories. This is a single form of one. Let's go ahead and keep it about business today. Let's go ahead and keep it about leads, listings, leverage. So you might have multiple form of ones, or you might. Um, does anybody have a form of one with those that you? I have. I was carrying mine around. So like I make my own. Like I. So I. You might have categories. So these are different categories. So you might have one that has business and professional or personal on it. You might have different. You might have all these different categories. Um, so I've got different categories. I have like regional director, five doors to the team, this office, personal, financial, family, spiritual, physical, mental, and leadership. So, I mean, you don't need all those categories, but you might have different categories, right? That's just how you can do it. You should have four and one for all the categories that that matter to you in your life. All the categories that matter to you in your life. Now, um, who can explain? Why it's called a 411, what that means, where does that come from? Four weeks, one month, one year. That's it. You look at the, the way the, the thing is structured. It's four weeks across the bottom, right? Then one month, one year. And essentially, um, essentially you take your, your goals, right? And you start at the top. And so this is actually showing the monthly goal. You start at the very top, which is what on your paper? Your, your annual goal. So let's, let's practice one. Um, let's practice one. So what would be your annual goal for uh, real estate? <coughs> let's just throw some, some examples around. Now you've got eight goal categories. You could go make one for each one of those eight goal categories. That would be really help that would be really healthy. Let's just focus on the top two, right? What were the top two? Leads and listings, right? So let's focus on that just for this, you know, you know kind of exercise. Then you'll go back and, and do it, add in the other stuff. So, what would be a goal for, um, how would I know how many listings I need to take this year to hit my goals? First of all, you know how much money you need. There you go. Yeah, so like we call that the economic model. So, what would happen is, I would know that, uh, and I would first start with exactly what you said, how much money I want to make, right? So, this year, I want to make $100,000. Um, and what? What's my average uh, commission check? Like you could just do the math, right? What's the average commission check? Just give me a number. Let's give you five thousand dollars as an even number. So five thousand is my average commission. Um, how many closings do I need to have? To get to 
Fine. Yeah, so Fine. you do a little bit more math inside this, right? Because if you want to say, say I want to make a hundred thousand, let's make it real simple. Uh, gross commission income, right? Before expenses, before everything like that. Say I want to make two hundred thousand. So if I make two hundred thousand in total commissions, I'm going to have expenses. I'm going to pay taxes. I'll probably end up with a hundred thousand for myself, right? Let's just use that even number. So how many closings do I need to have to get to two hundred thousand dollars? Forty, right? So if I need to have 40 closings, and you would just do all this kind of on the side, and we have a business planning clinic every year you'd go to, and they help you through these exercises based on your goals. So if I want to have 40 closings, um, let's say they're, um, what percentage, bless you, of our closings actually sell, right? So do 65% of, of our listings sell? Do 85% of our listings sell? What? 70. 70% of our listings actually sell. They go 30% expire or don't sell, price too high, whatever, right? So how many listings do I need to take if I want to close 40? 70%. You would take 40 and divide by 0 0.7. The average calculator. 40 divided by 0 0.7. Yeah, it's be like 62, 63. Forty divided by 0.7. 57. So that means, do you see where I'm at? So I need to take 57 listings. That's my goal. The top of one line. So um, figure out your goal for how many listings you need to take this year to your goal. What's your dollar goal? Go ahead and write down your dollar goal. How much, how much commission income do you want to make this year? Go ahead. We'll just do this. Nobody's going to look at it. I just want to walk you through the, the process of how to use this tool. And we're going to rough draft something here, and then we'll teach you how to use it real quick. So write down how much money you want to make, and then kind of, even if you have to guesstimate some of the math, don't worry about the numbers being right today. This is more about how to use the tool, okay? So how many listings, you can just ballpark it, how many listings do you believe you need to take? And then you're going to have to kind of guess or ballpark how many leads you believe you'll need to generate. Now you would go through our class or, and calculate some of this stuff or go talk to your mentor on how to calculate some of this stuff or look at our business planning funny. How many leads do you suppose it takes to get, you know, to, to take 57 listings you might have to go on 100 appointments. You might have to go on 80 appointments, right? How many, list, how many leads would it take for you to get 80 appointments? Different for every person. 120, 200 leads, 300 leads. And that's what you'd write down, right? So let's say for, so does everybody have those three numbers? Like how much money you want to make? How many listings you need to take? And how many leads? Just put those numbers down. Even if you're not sure about the math on that. This class is more about how to use the tools. Does everybody have those three numbers? Even if you're not, even if the numbers are just a guess number. Put something down. All right, does everybody have those? I'll give you another set. Does it need another minute? Okay, so now you go to the monthly. So you'd simply um, take those numbers and divide them by 12, or or if you've done this before and you know that like, well, July last year um, was a bigger month, so I'm expecting a bigger number, right? You know a little bit about the seasonality. Or it's winter time, so even if my number comes out that I need to take five listings this month, well, July is a peak month, so really I need to take eight listings because in January I'm only going to take three, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If you know that so well, you customize this month. Otherwise, if you're not sure, just put in like divided by 12. Just put in divided by 12. And then you'll track your numbers, and next year you'll be able to actually go in and say, oh no, July is going to be a, need to be a bigger goal because I do more that month. And then December, I do less. So your numbers might look different. But for now, just divide by 12 and put it one box below, right? So now you're going to the next line. And you write it in just that open space there. For each of those three numbers, just, just divide it by 12. Thank <laughs> you. 
Everybody have that? So what we've done, we've taken the annual goals, we thought about the big rocks, the things that matter most, you know, that 20% of the 80-20, made a couple goals on that. Now we break it down in a monthly increment, that's what we just did. Now we're going to go to weekly activities, we're only going to do one week at a time, so you just like, even though we're in the second week of the month, go ahead and just use like that first week box, you see you have week one, two, three, four, oh really, you can use the second week, we're in the second week. So now, let me give you a little hint, and what I like to do is even write like, um, not just your weekly goals, like on your paper I think it says weekly goals, like put next to that, see where it says weekly goals on your form, write down like slash activities, weekly activities, and then let's talk about what activities you need to do this week that will cause you to get that many leads, and cause you to get that many listings. Right? So somebody who's, who wants to share their number of leads that they need to get this month. Somebody want to share their number? How many leads do you need to get this month? Ten. All right, so we get ten leads this month. So this week, what's an activity that you could do that really is more towards like the top of like the activities that's really pretty much guaranteed to get you, you know, however many leads you need to get this week? So a home buyer seminar, good. What are some other activities? Thank you. Somebody else share me share with me their number. How many leads do you need to get this month? Two hundred eight leads this month. Big number. All right, that's cool. So now this week is probably 50, 60, right up here, just to buy them equally. Fifty two. So then instead of just putting down, I want to get fifty two leads this week. That would be, you would write that down. Also want to get activities. So what activities could she do to generate 52 leads this week? Cold calling, door knocking. Cold calling, door knocking. And, and you would quantify that, right? You would say, so cold call, a certain amount. how do we make that specific measurable? 100 calls, a day. 100 calls per day. And I would even have book by, by 11 o'clock or something like that to really force in that first time. Uh, door knock 200 doors. By, do you see how specific you get? Now what is the... What, what does your accountability partner, your maps coach, hold you accountable to? That activity. How many calls did you make? Let me see it. How many doors did you knock? How did it go? Did you get 52 leads? How many leads did you get? I got 50, I got 48 leads. Okay, great. How do you feel about that? Not so happy. Okay, based on that, what are you going to do next week? Well, I'll door knock, I'll call 120 people. I'll door knock 210 homes. See if that gets me my number. And then what happens is four on one tool, it's not about a hammer to, to force you to do anything. It's a measurement tool to say, like, is it 100 doors I need to knock on, or 200 doors, or 50 doors? And then you experiment. Is it date night that I need to do with my wife? Or is it the 10-minute conversation? Or is it the movie, that, right? Experiment. Oh, that one was the one that worked. OK, now I'm going to keep doing that every week, because that's my goal. You follow me? So same thing could be.